Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. I'm a Forbes contributor covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing. Our guest today is the Honorable Mayor Ben McAdams, the mayor of Salt Lake County. Mayor McAdams is running some really bleeding edge initiatives in the impact investing world with pay for success programs that are really just, on, like I say, on the bleeding edge of innovation. And uh, Mayor, we're excited to have you here with us. Thanks for joining us. Great, Devin. It's great to be here. Well, uh, pleasure is all ours. Mayor, tell us a little bit about the uh, pay for success programs you're already running. So we launched in 2013 together with the United Way of Salt Lake and Voices for Utah Children a pay for success initiative focused around early education preschools essentially. What we see is that many of our at-risk kids, kids that are coming from low-income homes, kids who are English language learners will enter our kindergarten system not prepared to learn. In fact, the average child will enter kindergarten with a vocabulary of about 1,100 words. These at-risk kids are, in, are starting kindergarten with a vocabulary of three to 400 words. And so it's no surprise that at the end of kindergarten, they've learned, but they've learned less than their peers who had an average level of vocabulary. And they fall behind year after year such that in, in Utah and in many states, they'll, they'll then start, we'll, we'll do a standardized test at the end of second grade and find that these kids are so far behind that they need additional education. They need special education, resource learning that's very expensive. And that costs the taxpayers a lot of money to have that, um, that additional investment. And, and what the studies show is we can avoid that expensive cost in the third grade with some pre-kindergarten learning. And so we, we had had some studies that we had done. We'd seen that if we can get some of these at-risk kids really just up their vocabulary, up their ability to learn to interact in the social setting before they start kindergarten, that then you put them into the regular school system and they'll progress like everybody else. So we noticed that we could fund this, this high quality preschool investment, could give these kids what they needed, but, but how do we pay for that? We can't cancel some special ed programs, we can't defund other important programs that we're doing. How do we make a difference for these kids? So that's where we became aware of this notion of, of pay for success. And um, we said, you know, we know that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but all of our money is tied up in cures that we can't stop investing in. And so um, this pay for success mechanism came forward where we said we will pay for every child, at-risk child, who can avoid uh, special ed in the third grade. We will take the savings that would go into special ed and use that to repay an investment that was made in preschool. And so we saw some funders who were willing to step forward and invest in this special ed program. We entered into a contractual arrangement where at the end of, end of this period, the kids are now, we launched this in 2013, so our kids received preschool. They're now in the school system in a kindergarten. And we're going to measure them at the end of second grade. And if they're performing as we hope they will, then we will pay what the funders, the investment made by funders in, in preschool, will repay their upfront costs. And, and what we see we're able to do is we're able to use precious government resources in a way to really make a difference uh, in the lives of these young kids that we weren't able to do previously because we just didn't have the money to do it. Well, it is a remarkable program, and it allows you, you to put the risk of failure off on someone else. That's you right. You're not taking any risk as a county in making sure that uh, kids get educated. Who's taking that risk? Let's be clear about that. So in our specific transaction, it was Goldman Sachs and, and the J.B. Pritzker Foundation, so philanthropy and, and, and private sector who stepped forward to, to provide the upfront funding. And, and really, they are assuming the risk. And, and the benefit to the public in that is because they have the risk, they also have the incentive for continual improvement. They're going to work to make sure they are impacting every kid possible because we will only pay for the kids who succeed the kids who, who move forward, and, and if, if their program fails, if the program succeeds with 500 out of our 600 kids, then we're going to pay for 500, but we want to hold them accountable uh, for, for making sure that we make a difference in every one of those kids' lives. Of course, this is appealing to them as uh, philanthropists because it allows them, if they're successful, to get their money back and redeploy it in some future program. So this really is... Uh, a win-win-win for everybody involved, isn't it? 
It, it absolutely is. And one of the things that we've seen, one of the things that philanthropists like about this is in the past they write the check and hope that their investment makes a difference. We're going to come back and show them. We'll say, look, here, you, you helped 600 kids get into a preschool program and 550 of them are now reading at grade level. So they can, they can, you know, they can take their philanthropic dollars and donate them over and over again, which is a, certainly a benefit. But they also are going to know what they did, and 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 they're going to be able to funnel their precious philanthropic dollars into places that have the highest impact. Instead of just a hope and cross our fingers that it succeeds, we're going to show them real data about what their investment did and how they can continue to make it really is a powerful model for both philanthropy and for government, isn't it? It absolutely just, is. Just yeah. great. Now, you you were wanting to expand this effort into three new areas. Tell about tell us about the new areas you want to expand this. So this we believe this is a model. It worked for us in preschool, but really there's so many places in government where we see that notion that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but we don't have the ability to prevent uh, and we look at this context, we look at, at government in general, and where there are opportunities to have a present intervention to save a future cost, that we can help real people in our community. And some of the areas we're looking at is homelessness. Homelessness is an area that's incredibly expensive to the taxpayer, and, and people who fall through the cracks in many cases. And if we can deliver some services up front to improve that intervention, help these people get the treatment they need, whether it's substance abuse or behavioral health, treatment or other types of job skill training that will help some of our homeless individuals, we can save some of those expensive costs on the back end. So we're looking at homelessness. We're also looking at recidivism. We know that when we run the largest jail in the state of Utah is Salt Lake County. And we know with statistical reliability that uh, the people who leave our jail today, 60% of them, 6 out of 10 people who are released from our jail today, will be back in jail before the year's out. And that's expensive. We, we, you know, we have a correction system. We call this corrections. Um, but we know that 6 out of 10 are failing to graduate from our correction system. If we can move the needle and help some of them actually graduate the correction system and go on to become productive members of our community, to hold down a job, to support their loved ones, to, uh, to not have future victims of crime in the future, we can change that from 6 out of 10 a five or four or three out of ten, then incredible, incredible tax savings to the taxpayer, which is attractive. But also just look at the people, the the kids who will have a parent who's not in jail but is at home, um, being a father and a mother to these kids. To the impact that will have on on our community in the in the immediate sense, but for future generations is so compelling to me. It, it, <clears throat> these are really powerful, powerful. Uh, opportunities to not only uh, govern well, uh, save money, but to have that uh, wonderful impact, as you say, on the lives of human beings in your community. Just really a, a powerful model. Wh what do you see as being the timeline for implementing these newer initiatives? So what, what we're going to do, uh, you know, we want to we want to proceed very carefully as we move forward with this. Uh, far too often, government um, leaders may write a check and then just let it go and not not monitor. So we want to we want to set our expectations, set our goals and outcomes, have quantifiable data that will help to guide us and to know if we're actually having the impact that we hope to have. So we're going to be doing some some landscaping over the next couple of months, and we will go out and uh, with the procurement to select the providers, the the nonprofit uh, who can provide this service. We think in a way that will meet the rigorous standards we have for the people who will be in our program. And um, hopefully launch this, uh, do all the work, and then start doing some contracts over the end of, end of the year, how this financial uh, investment in our community is going to work, and what, what expectations we will have as government in order to pay for the success at the end of the trial, and, and look for the, the funders who will come in to support the program up front. So our goal would be to launch this um, end of 2015, beginning of 2016, to launch the, the these three simultaneous pay for success interventions. Wow, uh, so so uh, innovative. You, know, you I understand, Mayor. Correct me if I'm wrong, but th this is the first county level implementation of a pay for success program in the country. Is that your understanding? That's the, it's the first county level. We were actually the third in the world to do this pay for success. It started in, in the UK around recidivism, 
and then quickly uh, after the UK, the um, the city of New York did a, a recidivism focused. We were the first first ever to do one focused on early education on the preschool initiative that we did, uh, and the third pay for success initiative in the world, first focused on preschool, first county level. It's starting to get some more attention, and and, and this notion is developing as the as the learning around how this tool could work, how we can really have a maximum impact on the people in our community is developing and, and you'll see 10 or 15 pay for success uh, investments made in 2015 and um, we're hoping to continue the innovation as we are the first repeat player in pay for success and doing this in, in a portfolio approach instead of a one-off approach but we're looking to do this portfolio of interventions uh, that will focus on homeless individuals, recidivism and, and we think there's some opportunities in other child, maternal child health as well, so improve health outcomes for young children. Very, very exciting. Before you go, I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, Mayor, why do you care about these issues? Well, you know, Devin, I would say first of all, I'm motivated by um, a mother who um, raised her kids, you know, pretty much single-handedly uh, as a school teacher and and much of who I am today, I owe to my mother. And, and I say that now because uh, my mother actually passed away a couple of weeks ago. So she's on the forefront of my thoughts right now. But she really is maybe the reason that I'm in a position that I am to make a difference. But also the motivation. She gave me the skills, but also the motivation to, to have an impact. But, but Devin, I also think about some people that I've been able to meet in, in my, during my opportunity to serve as mayor. I think of a man named John who was... Um, homeless, chronically homeless, living on the streets here in Salt Lake City. And John got into a program that works. Today, John um, is on the path to stability. He, he manages his, his um, frailties that, that, that put him in the situation where he was homeless for many years um, and is an advocate for other homeless people. And, and I think about the people who are in the programs, the people we serve. And, and some programs are incredibly effective and others are less so. Um, but for every individual who's in a, in a program that isn't doing the most that it can to move these people to success, um, then they're missing out on the opportunities to, to be successful. The community isn't as benefited as much as we could if, if we focus our precious and limited resources on what data show matters. It matters and can have an impact. So I do it for people like John, who, who today, John has a home, John has a job, and John is an advocate for other people who are homeless, and and I think that we've got to we've got to focus our precious resources in the areas that matter. Um, I think of you know not to I could, I could go on and tell so many stories, but I think of a young man Nick, who uh, who was in our foster care program, and when he graduated from foster care at the age of 18, uh, the day after his 18th birthday, he was couch surfing with some friends, and then started sleeping under viaducts. And Nick was homeless. And Nick has gotten into a program where now he, he, he couldn't get a job because he didn't have uh, identification. So he got into a program. They helped him find a driver's license. They find, he found his birth certificate, helped him get a driver's license. He has a car, and he has a job. And it's we're going to spend money putting Nick in a homeless shelter. But we want to spend money helping Nick find his documentation, to have a mentor to teach him uh, some social skills and how to navigate in a, in a social context, how to be accountable for a job. And, and that, Nick's so much happier today than he was before. And, and so that's why we do it. We do it for people like Nick and John, in my mind, who want to, want to be independent, want to be contributing members of society. And we just have to give them that, that beginning, that start, that opportunity to, to, to reach out and, and succeed. Well, it, it, though, Nick and John make perfect reasons for doing this. Uh, Mayor, you've been very successful. Uh, I think there is great success ahead of you, but you've been very successful in your career. And I wonder if you would just give our audience, which is really focused on, on finding ways to do good in the world, give us a tip, give us some advice, just one thing, how we can do more good in the world. Well, uh, thank you, Devin. I, I, I think... We do good in the world when we, we when our motivations are well grounded. 
So for me, what's mattered is, uh, especially in a political context, so often today we have gridlock and partisanship and, and elected officials who just look to, to the next election and how we're going to win the next election. And, and for me, what's, what's been my recipe for success is to, to think on what really matters, and that's uh, the people that I serve and why I'm serving them. And, and, um, and that's helped me to, I think, take some stands that are pretty bold, some, some risky moves that are innovative, because uh, I care about the people that I serve and the people in our community for whom we can make a difference. Well, I think it's great advice to be focusing on that which really matters. Well, Mayor, I know that there will be people from uh, across the country who are interested in learning more about your Pay for Success programs. Is there a place you can point them to go learn more about what you're doing here in Salt Lake County? We have information on our website, www.slco.org. There's information available there. My email's there. I'd love to talk to anybody who wants to reach out directly. Uh, we really are. We're hosting a conference, in fact, next week. We have about 200 people who are flying in to learn more about Pay for Success, so we're continuing to, to develop uh, with our experiments and our successes in the Pay for Success area, and we'd love to share it. That's right. So tell us a little bit. Is it too late to register for the conference? Well, there's a portion of it on Wednesday that's full at this point. So Wednesday the 21st is full. Um, we have some uh, additional opportunities on Wednesday night and Thursday morning, the 21st and 22nd of January. Uh, so they can find out information, again, at our website, SLCO, Salt Lake County. Okay. And, and the White House is partnering with you on this conference, right? They are. They are. And uh, they're, they're hosting the, the symposium on on January 21st, and that's the one that is full, but, but we're happy to share any materials and learning that we have out of that. Encourage people to reach out. And, and we, we think this is a tool that's really helped us improve our uh, ability to impact the, the lives of the people in our community, and we're, we're excited to share. Well, fantastic. Mayor, thank you very much for joining us. We wish you every success. Thanks, Devin. All righty. Let's do some good.